I wonder if you can hear the birds like squawking. I closed the windows in here, but I'm leaving other windows open because it's a beautiful day. And I actually was not planning on filming a video today. It's Sunday. I just got back from vacation yesterday. However, it is such a beautiful evening out and I've had a really productive day that I'm feeling like still a productive burst tonight, but I need like a bit of a writing break because I've written like 5,000 words today. I need a bit of a mental break for a second. So I was like, let me quickly film a bookshelf tour while the sun is out. So we're looking a little crusty, but I mean, it's literally the focus is my bookshelves. I recently moved into a new place, which now gave me this office space, which I absolutely love and I'm obsessed with. So in my old apartment, I only had two of these black bookcases. They're the Black Billies from Ikea. So I had two of them Then I was able to get a third one that is like this big size and then I have one of the skinny ones on the end and then I have two other bookcases out in my living room that I built um and I'm just gonna do a bookshelf tour of my new library so and yeah I'll quick like flip you around and show you kind of my office it's a little bit of a mess right now just because I've been like working in it all day but yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna obviously like talk in depth about every single book that I own and give you a synopsis I'm just gonna kind of show you the books that I have why I kind of have them grouped together how I do and that's what we're gonna do so anyways updated bookshelf tour time so this is kind of my I don't really want to like show outside but anyways this is like my office setup I have my desk it's a set to stand one and then I have my bookcases okay so we got the first bookcase also yeah there's gonna be some rough angles in here because I literally just have my tripod to try to maneuver um but y'all know you don't come here for the professionalism of my videos okay you never have you never will that's what we're rolling with that's what you're gonna get so anyways First shelf. Up here, I guess this is kind of my sex club shelf. Uh, I got the Salacious Players Club series by Sarah Kate in the like men covers because I love the men covers. I started collecting them when they had the men covers and I do not really like the new ones. So very glad to have those. And then I have my first set of special editions, which is the cover to cover Salacious Players Club series ones. So these ones are just they're they're beautiful i love them and i just recently got highest bitter and madame in which is awesome uh and then i have this little quote art that avery made me avery from uh, ava's romance books for mercy because that is my favorite one god tier book one of my favorite books uh so i have that one out on display there the alchemy series by elodie hart unfurl is my favorite of them all but such a fun series really excited to read the next one whenever she releases it then I have more Sex Club slash then Fiona Cole. So I, when I was in my old place, I had two bookcases that were like my display ones that didn't really have a rhyme or reason to them. It was more just like me displaying like my special editions, author collections, what have you. But in this new setup, I didn't really have like that difference because then the rest of my books, I just had alphabetical order by author last name. I didn't really, I didn't want to do the same thing that I had. So I just started like kind of lumping them together, but I do still keep authors together. So even though like the Blame It on the Alcohol series is not a sex club series, it's on the sex club shelf because it's by Fiona. Nicole. So I have three of the Boyer books. I still have yet to collect the other three. I also have Shame with this stunning cover. I think this is a Hello Lovely box one. I don't know. I had to get it off of Macari. It is a Hello Lovely box one. Uh, then on this next shelf, and obviously I have room to like fill in more books, but I wanted to kind of keep it that way that I could add more as it comes. So this one is a little bit more, these were kind of like hodgepodge at the end and I didn't really know where to incorporate a lot of these. So I have my Nikki Sloan books over here. I have the first three books, or not the first three. I have three of the books in the National Labor series. Again, need to collect the last two. Uh, and then I have the Filthy Rich American series. I've still yet to finish these last two, but I'm hoping to finish them this year. And I have the Never After series by Emily McIntyre. So far, Scarred is still my favorite. I'm sad I didn't end up getting the Mystic Box special editions of them. I'm just really trying to be strict with myself about not buying special editions just because I like them and only really getting them of my absolute favorites. So I didn't get those, but I do love this series. And yeah, I still need Crossed. And then I have the Raven Hood series by Kate Stewart. This, these two books still just wreck me. And then I don't know what this is called. The Violent Delight series by Jess Coggins. I still haven't read this yet. And then I have my little 10,000 subscriber plaque that Nikki from Nikki and Bookland gifted me when I had 10,000 subscribers. Now, can we just like lower? We're headed into the mafia world. We're into my mafia territory. I have all of my core Riley books. I have almost every single Kamora Chronicle and Born in Blood book and Bison I Rise. So actually I have 
the entire Born and Blood series, the entire Gamora Chronicles, and then I have the first three book, or not the first three, I have three books in the Sins of the Father series. I don't have a uh, by, what is it, by, oh, I can't remember, Anna's and her bodyguard, one of my favorite ones. Actually, probably my favorite in the series. And then the newest one by Frenzy I Ruin or whatever. Sweet Temptation. And then this. I love this. This is one of my favorite special editions that I have. Again, where is... I never can remember where this one is from. And I feel like it doesn't say it, like, anywhere. I genuinely don't know. But this is literally one of my favorite ones. The blood splatter on this is raised. It's so cool. I absolutely love it. Uh, and then I have the Maid series by Daniel Laurie. And then God of Fury by Raina Kent. I still haven't read this yet. I need to collect the rest of these. But uh, I read God of Malice recently. Absolutely loved it. And I need to collect the rest. But for right now, it just sits nice and pretty in that spot. Why does it look like it's tilted off that way? Like it's tilted. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, next up we got more Mafia. So I have the indie published versions of the Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark and then also the indie published versions of the Kingmakers. Now these recently got picked up by Bloom and they actually changed the covers and the titles I think. Uh, I still haven't finished them all. I've only read The Air but I absolutely love this series. I really enjoyed The Air and I cannot wait to get to this Savage which is the last book because that is Camila Nero's daughter from Savage Lover which is my favorite Sophie Lark book. So I have this copy which I think I think again is a Hello Lovely copy maybe and then I also have the original man cover of these two and these two together like oh, they're just so pretty and then I have some other Sophie Lark books there and then I also have the Boston Underworld series by Aza Varelli. Still have not read these yet, but they are on my priority TBR. Okay, angling this down a little bit more. Now I have a little bit more of like a hodgepodge shelf here, but kind of like darker romances. I have all of my Gianna Darling books. I have my Fallen Men series. Still miss seeing Caution of the Wind. I haven't read that one yet. So I have four of the ones in the women covers, which are actually my favorite. I honestly really love the men ones too, but I already had Inked and Lies in the man cover, so I didn't get it in the woman cover. And then after the fall, I Honestly, it's like my least favorite, so I just got it in the men cover as well. But then these four I love to have in the pretty female hard covers. And then I have the Enslaved Duet, which I still have to finish Enamored. Serpentine Valentine, love that one. Uh, Welcome to the Dark Side, this special edition. I think it's a hella lovely one again of that one. Uh, and then this is the When Heroes Fall Duet, the Mystic Box versions, but I put the pretty like sprayed edges out. And then again, another special edition that Caitlin from the Love Librarian gifted me because she, I don't remember like if she just got this and didn't want it or whatever, but I love Chantel Tessier's books and I need to collect more of them. So I was really, really excited to get the special edition of The Ritual. And then I have the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey, the like regular paperback, and then also the Mystic Box. I did take the dust jacket off. It's sitting back there. But I just love the plain heart. Plain. That doesn't seem right to talk about this that way. But I just really love this hardcover. And, and again, with the sprayed edges, it's just so pretty. And love to have that there. And then down at the bottom here, I have my after series. It's the series that started it all for me. Love to see them. Same with the Bared 2 series by Sylvia Day. Again, these were like my very early series that got me into romance and then I have Deliver Us by Pam Godwin like I said normally I like to keep things together but this did not fit up by my other Pam Godwin books so I put it down here with the other hard covers so I have that this is a bind up of the first three books I don't know what the series is called but the first one is like Deliver and then I think it's like Vanquish or something I don't know uh but I read the first one and really enjoyed it and want to continue on with that series and then I have some of my mystic books and their sprayed edges so you know so these ones are the Callie Hart ones these ones are the Tate James ones Amo Jones Jennifer Hartman Bella Aurora and then actually this one is a unicorn copy of The Devil of Dublin by B.B. Easton so this one was a part of the Dark and Quirky booktube box which if you are new here, that was something that I got to be a part of with four other booktubers. And this was one of the books in the box. However, this like font on here, as you can see, it's like duochrome almost, like rainbow. And it was supposed to be silver or like white. So when these got printed like incorrectly, then they sent these out as author gifts to people because Dark and Quirky did feature Take You Down in their winter box. So they sent this out for Christmas. So I actually love this color. I'll show the like regular version when I get to on the shelves, but I love this one. We're gonna work our way from the bottom up on this one because of me having to adjust the tripod and I'm lazy. So 
bottom shelf over here, we have more dark romances. So I have some miscellaneous ones from authors that I only have one or a couple of. So Lady of Rook's Grave Manor, Hollow Heathens, Songs of the Hunted, The Masks Duet, uh, The Dancer in the Masks Duet, what is this called? Their Obsession Duet, I think. I love this. I think this duet is so fun, unlike anything I've ever read. Gothic Hannah, then I have my H.G. Carlton books, Haunting and Hunting Adeline and Satan's Affair, and then the Mystic Box versions of Haunting and Hunting Adeline. And then Still Beating by Jennifer Harmon, again, just some more randoms, Sick Fox by Tilly Cole, Take Me With You by Nina G. Jones. And then I have my Amo Jones stack. So I have not read a good chunk of these, so I still have to read the Royal Elite series. I've read the first Midnight Mayhem book, and I've read Sicko, and I haven't read Manic yet. Now, I've put Manic off because it is a rock star, or like, is he a rapper? It's like a musician romance. And while I was writing Take You Down and Take My Hand, I was really trying to avoid reading any rock stars. Now that I'm taking a break and writing a sports romance, I feel like I get full full send to read all the rock stars. I just haven't been in the mood for it yet. Then this middle one is my sports slash hockey shelf. So I have the entire Off Campus and Briar U series by Al Kennedy in the uh, like indie published versions of these. They're not the ab covers, but they're still like the indie ones. And then I have two of the Off Campus ones with the sprayed edges and the new covers from Bloom. So I actually have the other three as well the mistake the goal and the legacy but one of my friends found them at barnes and at her barnes and noble i just haven't gotten them from her yet so i do have that full set i just don't have them on my shelves yet uh and then i have the gram effect which is the next generation this follows garrett and hannah's daughter which is the couple from the deal i love this it was so good and i can't wait to read the next one and i have the him and us duet by l kennedy and serena bone and then also the wag series i still have not read this yet and honestly i don't know why whenever I'm like in the mood for a hockey book I just I think I kind of forget about these then I have the first three books in the Vancouver Wolf series by Odette Stone absolutely love these first two still haven't read the penalty box but these two are some of my favorite hockey romances then some recent ones that I've read and loved iced out loved offside amazing currently reading shut out and really enjoying it however if I love it I need I need the discreet cover of it like this one I don't want the cartoon cover and I didn't realize that these were out of print now then hidden scars by Andy Jackson long shot by Kenny Ryan so this one is a basketball romance waking Olivia is a coach athlete and I have also a hello lovely box special edition of that one as well and then I have the right move by Liz Tom Ford this is actually the one from the UK because I didn't read this book until it was already out of print once again I didn't want the cartoon cover so I was able to get this one from the UK it just it's like a little bit shorter and if you can tell there's like that reflective cursive on it it's also very floppy then Nice Guys Don't Win by Macaulay Smeltzer this is a basketball romance and again I have more from her but it's on a different shelf because I kind of like separated them because I only had two of them and this one fit in this with the sports and then from Look Off With Love and Culty by Mariana Zapata, I still have not read those either. I got those years ago in a Target sale and every single year I'm like, I'm going to read one of them and then I just never pick them up. So again, prioritizing my physical TBR and one day I will get to them. Now I got a bit of a taboo shelf, I guess is what you could call this. This is actually one of my shel favorite shelves. It houses a lot of my favorite books. So over here I have this Novel Grounds version of Balance and it's only here because as we will get to in a moment my complete Balance Shrine is full. So this one had to go down. I love this. Normally I do not like cartoon or animated covers but I think this is absolutely stunning and I'm really happy that I got it because I will collect any iteration of this book there is out there. Literal favorite series of all time. Then I have the rest of my Lucia Franco books, which is Tell Me What You Want, Hush Hush and Say Yes. And then also this special edition that Danielle over on Instagram, she sent me, uh, I think this was like a part of a UK book box. And she sent this to me to congratulate me on Take My Hands, Release and Take You Down. And I had never seen it before. So I'm really happy to have that one on my shelves. Then I have The Truth About Heartbreak and The Truth About Tomorrow. Truth About Tomorrow, one of my favorite tab romances ever. I actually have two more special editions of these, but you'll see them in a little bit. I need to figure out how they're gonna work. I literally just got them, so I haven't like reorganized them. But this is one of my favorite special editions because of this spine. It's absolutely stunning. And I think the front of the cover is beautiful. And again, I think this is a, oh, it's a last chapter bookshop. And I have the Wolf Hotel series by K.A. Tucker. Absolutely bingeable, it's boss employee. It's amazing, you have to read it. They're so dramatic and fun. 
you just have to read them. They're so good. Then I have Burnout by Coralie June. This is a student teacher one. Then I have some Saffron Kent books, The Unrequited and Medicine Man, and then the special edition of Medicine Man. Some of my favorite, the, one of my favorite student teacher romances, one of my favorite forbidden romances. This one is uh, um, like a doctor and a patient in a psych ward. It's amazing. And then I have some coach, some more coach athlete books, I guess. I Break For You by KB Rowe, the first book, this is a volleyball coach and athlete romance. And then Head in the Game, this is a football coach and football player romance. Misbehaved, another student teacher one. And then the Kane series by Shonora Williams, absolutely love this. Literally, I think my favorite dad's best friend romance series ever. And then Sitting in Discipline by Lily White, again, another student teacher book. One of my favorites, If You've Read Dark Notes by Pam Godwin, gives kind of similar energy. Absolutely love it. Now we moved on to My Off Balance Shrine by Lucia Fran or Lucia. I just, I know that her name is pronounced Lucia. I learned that recently. And yeah, it's hard to reprogram my brain, okay? My literal favorite romance series of all time. I don't think it will ever be passed. So I have a lot of editions of this and I will collect every edition that I possibly can. So these are the Dark and Disturbed versions of these books. Love them. And it came with this candle back when they did that. Then I have the volumes that she did. So this first one has Balance, Release, and Execution. And then this one has Twist and Dismount. And then I have these. So Out of Bounds is just like the novella, obviously. But I have Balance and Execution. So these are the original covers. And also these are the original story, the unedited ones. I love these covers. I mean, I love the the couple covers that I'll show in a second they're literally like my favorite covers ever ever but I think these are really pretty and love to have these on my shelf and then I have this little Malish mug that I got from her website a while ago and then this sticker that I think what did this come with how did I get this I don't remember now and then I have this little necklace that Cheyenne from that tall book girl got me years ago uh with twist on it and yeah so I keep that with them uh, but then I have my paperback versions of Off Balance that are the couple covers. So I have two Balance and two Executions because these ones I ordered originally thinking that they were the original covers because these are the OG versions, which in case if you weren't aware, these uh, were revised later, actually up through book four, I think, right? Was it through book four? Uh, that she had to go back and edit some of the content in them in order to like fit with the Amazon guidelines to keep them from getting banned. So these are the like OG unedited versions, unrevised versions with the old ages and with the old like locations and things. Like a lot of the story is the same, but anyways. And then I have the rest of the series in the paperbacks. These are well loved. They're all tabbed. I've read this series like a million times. Then right above we have my QB Tyler shrine. Uh, basically it's like my two shrine shelves. Y'all know how much I love QB's books. Listen, okay, I have basically every single version of her books you can have, except I'm missing the Forget Me Not. I think it's the Hello Lovely version of that, the like kind of tealish cover. I'm missing that one. And now she recently had a signing exclusive of, of what was meant to be. And I'm obviously not going to any signings. So I do not have that special edition, but you best believe I will be on the hunt for them. So anyways, I have four of her hard covers over here of four of her books. And then I have all of my paperbacks. Bittersweet Love, I just head out for a book haul. Normally it goes down here, but I was clearly being lazy. But I have all of the paperbacks. I have two forget-me-nots because I already had one and then she sent me one signed. So I have two of those. Then I have the Canvas Tales series. And then these ones that were cover to cover special editions with these really, really pretty sprayed edges. And they came with, do I have the artwork tucked inside? The artworks of these are great. I definitely, I think is it the Love Unexpected one? I won't be showing that on YouTube. I'm trying to keep my monetiz monetization. Love those. Then I have some more special editions. This is one of my favorites. This bittersweet duet one. It's so stunning with like the little whiskey glass in the corner and everything. This was the Fit Teacher Rachel box. Oh my God, it's so stunning. And then just some more of the special editions, two versions of Unconditional, What Was Meant to Be, and A Love Unexpected. Also, if you're wondering where is your Always Meant to Be cover that you did, that's, we're getting to it. Aria wants to come in for the book haul, or for the, not the book haul, the library tour. Okay, I can hold you while I do this. So then I have the top shelf up here. So I have some more Mystic Box books. I have my Pam Godwin ones up there, The Dark Notes and Sea of Ruin. 
versions. I love those. I think they are some of my favorite Mystic Box ones that they've ever done. And I kept those with the original books. So honestly, this shelf I think was kind of my like emotional shelf that I paired together slash with the Pam Godwin books because they looked good on display. So I have Where the Mountains Meet the Sea by A.R. Breck. One of my favorite childhood friends to lovers, second chance, emotional ass book. Uh, Crash Course by Alyssa Wilde. It is a student teacher book, but it's not as taboo, like obviously it's taboo, but it's definitely more like emotionally driven than When Ashes Fall by Marnie Man and Even If It Hurts. Okay, Aria, I have to stop petting you to pull out my Even If It Hurts special edition because I had been hunting. Do you want to sniff it? I had been hunting for this one because this is like one of my favorite books of all time, okay? And I didn't realize that this had a special edition and I missed out on it. And then they had an overstock sale and I missed that. And Kelly from Kelly Reynolds Reads. So she actually, she, I think I had talked about it in a story, like complaining that someone was like, people obviously are like upselling these for insane amounts. And she had found one on, from someone in a Facebook group that was selling it for a very decent price. And she sent it to me and got me connected with her. Uh, so I was able to buy it off of this woman. And I'm just so excited to have it because if you know the, the lore or the lore, I don't know. If you've heard me talk about this book, you know. And if you haven't, I don't know. We can chat. Uh, then I have truly one of the most heartbreaking books I've ever read in my entire life, which is Forbidden by Tabitha Zuma. It's not going to be for everyone, but it is... I loved it. I loved the hell out of it. I'll defend that book for forever. I love it. I honestly want to do a reread soon. Then I have A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Signer, Underneath the Sycamore Tree by B. Celeste. The original cover, I do not like the new one, so I'm very happy to have this old cover because it's stunning. And then My Life in Shambles, and then one of my all-time favorite books, Sweet Dandelion by Macaulay Smeltzer. And then I have this cute little mug here that my friend Amanda got me for Christmas that had like all of some of my favorite books on it. And then this cool little like read thing that my mom got me for Christmas a couple of years ago. Now we're moving into the Penelope Douglas Shrine. We got two shelves plus a bonus one down here that we'll get to. Uh, Penelope Douglas, along with some of the other authors that were just on that other shelf, is my favorite author. I love them. I will read every single thing that they publish and I will buy every single book that they have. So up here I have the entire original bully cover. Well, actually I think the bully cover, this one is not the original, original one, but I have like these that has this like falling away that was like impossible to find. And then Sam from Sam Reads Little found it at a library sale and that she like had it in her collection. And then when she heard me talking about it, she was like, I'll send it to you. Oh my God, Sam, I'm so, so grateful for that. So I have those original series up here, the Fall Away series, and then Misconduct, and then I have Birthday Girl, my different editions, my original indie paperback, and then this one was a bookish box special edition, and then I have my Mystic Box one back here, which is truly one of my most prized possessions. I will literally never get rid of this book, ever, ever, ever. Uh, then I just have this random vase here because it filled out the space nicely. Uh, then I have Falls Boys. I know Pirate Girls just came out. I haven't bought it yet. I literally, like I said, I just got home from vacation. I will obviously be buying it soon. Then I have my indie paperbacks of Punk 57 and Credence. And then I have, is this the French version of Credence or the German version of Credence? I don't actually know. It's definitely not in English, but this is stunning. It's available on Amazon. Uh, and then I have this version of Credence that was, was this a Hello Lovely box one too? That Zay from Witty Reads gifted me for my birthday, I think couple years ago this truly was like a, I never thought that I would own this book because again I didn't have a sub at the time so I didn't get it originally and then people already resell books for insane amounts but people specifically resell Penelope Douglas books at insane prices so I was like just certain that I was never gonna have this and I'm still forever grateful so love to have this one here and then I just have these like UK random editions of Until You and Falling Away and Misconduct because these two I, I didn't have in the like US versions until I found them. So I had those originally. Then I have my Devil's Night Shelf. I have the original indie paperback versions of these. Um, I'm gonna, this is taking forever pulling out all these books. So I'm gonna stop pulling them all out. Anyways, these are the original indie editions. And then I have the original indie white cover versions of them. And then I have the Mystic Box versions of them. 
The ones that I don't have are the new traditionally published ones. And honestly, I don't know if I will. I don't typically buy the traditionally published versions of the books that I have, unless if I love the covers, which quite frankly, I very rarely ever like love the covers of the new traditionally published ones. I honestly think the Devil's Night ones are pretty good. They like give me similar vibes to the original like black and red ones but I don't feel the need to like buy them right now. Then we'll move down a shelf where I have Tri-6 Venom, so another bonus Penelope book that just ended up on this shelf. Uh, this is absolutely stunning. This is the Eternal Embers special edition of it. I love it and it has this slipcase. This is stunning, one of my favorite special editions. I love this book and I loved that it got a special edition. And again, I have the indie version, the like indie cover of this. I know that it's also traditionally published and the cover changed. The cover is actually not bad. I don't mind it, but the original cover I like more. Then I just have, this is just like kind of a bit of like a hodgepodgey shelf again. I have the From Nothing series by Nordica Knight. Garen Park was my absolute favorite book that I read last year. This and Lot 62, like this duet was my favorite. This is an MM hate to love motocross romance. True hate to love. They Oh my god, they're always fighting with each other. It's so good. It's so toxic. It's so messy. I just absolutely love it. I have If There's a Will There's and If There's a Way by Jesse Walker. Oh my god, I still need to read the second one, but this first book absolutely broke me and again was one of my favorites of last year. Then I have The Words by Ashley Jade. I have the original indie paperback. Again, it's now traditionally published with a new cover. And then I also have this special edition that I got at Book Bonanza that was like a signing exclusive, but I actually think you might be able to still get this on Amazon. Then I have some Liza James books over here. So I guess actually this is kind of like an MMFF like shelf. I have Vibe, which again was a, an exclusive edition that I got at Book Bonanza. Uh, I absolutely love this. And Liza James was also the sweetest fucking person like I've ever met in my entire life. She was the first person that me, Nikki, and Cheyenne went to when the signing started. And she was literally, like, I can't say enough good things. She was quite literally one of the nicest people I've ever met. And love, love this special edition. Vibe is one of my favorite books ever. So love to have that. And then I have some more of her books. So Fade and Descent, I still haven't read yet. And Same for Meant for More, I haven't read that one yet. Uh, I think this, these, I think these three are MF. I haven't read any of her MF ones. I've only ever read her sapphic romances. Uh, the Madhouse is sapphic step siblings. Love it. And then again, obviously Vi and Hush. Now here we have basically my Kristen Becker Ritchie shrine with some other miscellaneouses over here. So I have again, the indie versions. These are now also traditionally published. They're not like the OG OG covers. They are like these ones, which are basically the same as the new ones, but anyways, they're like the indie published ones. And then I have the Like Us series, most of the books. What am I up through? I have up through book nine. I think there are like, what, 15 books in this? So I'm still missing some more. Love this series. I've read the first five and I will definitely be continuing on. It's the second gen spinoff of this series, but with their bodyguards. I absolutely love it and I'll keep going. I just haven't yet. And then I have this version of Hot House Flower because one day it was randomly on sale on Amazon for like two dollars. So why would I not buy it? Then I have three books in the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. I have the people covers of Flawless and Heartless and then I have this version of Reckless because the people version was no longer in print when I read this and wanted it. Uh, and then I have just two random books. I have The Love Hypothesis and The Hating Game. Just randomly they kind of fit here and they work. Uh, I love the love hypothesis because I love Raylo. Then down here, I guess I have some religious trauma. The Priest series by Sierra Simone. So I have Priest and Midnight Mass in the indie published because you see they don't have the Bloom logo and then I have Sinner and Saint the Bloom versions, but the covers still like match. They still match the other ones. And I have Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin. Uh, this is a priest romance. This is also a priest romance. This is a nun romance. <laughs> this is a monk one. And then That Sick Love uh, deals with like cults and a stalker. Love it. One of my favorite books I read last year. Then I have this cute little mug that's me and my little babies on it that one of my friends got me years ago. Right? Do you want to come in and say hi? Of course. Must say hi since your sister made an appearance. Dorian has big FOMO. Uh, then I have the Magnolia Parks books. Also, let's just take my iPad off. I have the Magnolia Parks series. So I have the first three in the like old indie covers. Again, now they've been traditionally published with feet on the covers. 
uh don't love those and then i have the artist covers of these two but i had to get them from like blackwell in the uk so they're bigger sizes as you can see than these ones but at least they're the same covers then again i just have some more you just knocked that book over sir and i'm going to be coming over there soon I have some more just miscellaneous books that these just kind of ended up down here because that's where they fit. So I have Real by Kennedy Ryan. This is a director and actress romance between Hello and Goodbye, an emotional long distance one. From the Embers by Ali Martinez. Love You From Afar and Hate You Up Close by Morgan Page. I actually just took this book on vacation and I didn't get to it, but I'm really excited to read this. This is a fiance's brother's cheating romance and this one is a boss employee. Ivy by Willa Nash, Parallel by Ella Rourke, The Unwanted Marriage by Katerina Mora, and Unteachable by Leah Rader, which is another student teacher book. But again, it didn't fit over on the student teacher shelf, so it's over here. This is again, just kind of a bit of a miscellaneous shelf. Like a lot of these were just the same height, so they got down here. So uh, this series by Karina Halley, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's like vampire paranormal books. I still haven't read it. I want to, I will at some point, but I still haven't. Then this series by Jade, or this, trilogy by Jade West. So this is a part of the Midnight Dynasty series that uh, this series by Kay Webster also is and also The Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin. It's just a bunch of like wealthy families that various authors wrote different families for. So you don't have to read them in any particular order. There's just crossover. I really like that universe. I just haven't read these yet. Then I have this duet by Anna Zaris. I still have yet to read anything by her, but I know I'm going to love them because everyone raves about how great her dark romances are. Then like I said, this one is a part of the Midnight Dynasty series. I love this. I ate this up. It's a boss employee, kind of like Cinderella-ish retelling. Really good. Then just some random standalones. Haven by Rebecca Weatherspoon. The Pawn by Sky Warren. Still haven't read this. This was a free book from Book Bonanza. So I just like, I don't even know what it's about to be completely honest. And then I have my one and only historical romance, which is The Lady Gets Lucky by Joanna Shoup. I love this book. This book is so good. If you are like me and you don't normally like historical romances, this shit is still so good. Then I have my Adam Driver candle because I love Adam Driver. I have five of the Ice Planet Barbarian series that are in like these new kind of covers. These are so fun. And I like the pop of color that they give my shelf. And then I have all my Colleen Hoover books, uh, Verity, Too Late. And again, I have a lot of these in the old covers. So like this Too Late cover, I think this is insane. This is the traditional, or this is the indie published version of it. It's sickening. I think this cover is so good and way better in my opinion than the new traditionally published one. Uh, all Your Perfects, It Ends With Us, Starts With Us, Ugly Love, Reminders of Him in November 9, my least favorite Colleen Hoover book ever, but we're not here to talk about that. Okay, now we have my skinny bookshelf over here. So I have the first three books from the From Blood Nash series by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I have completely given up on this series. I don't know, because I do, I love these first two books. But honestly, I don't even know where the series is at. In this point, I don't even know what book number it's on. I don't know the order anymore. I'm completely confused. And honestly, I don't know. Maybe at one day, I'll, like when the series is finished, I'll go back and reread them all. But for right now, I've given up on it. And all of these books were ones that I got sent in PR. I recently gave some to some of my friends because I just like wasn't gonna read them. So a lot of them were like small town and like single dad romances, which like I just, I don't really read a lot of them, but I did end up keeping these ones uh, because they all sounded really good. So one day, hopefully I'll get to these. This shelf is not gonna stay like this. I literally just put these here for the sake of the video. This cube was empty. Uh, but I recently got this. These were The Dark and Disturbed, The Truth About Duet by B. Celeste. I love this one. Let me tell you, I think this cover is stunning. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's so beautiful. Then my favorite book of the two, which is The Truth About Tomorrow and The Truth About Us, which is like their little duet or their little like novella at the end here. They combined it into one. I'm not as sold on this one. I don't know. I'm still unsure about how I feel about it. I love the back. I'm just unsure about the, I don't know. I don't know. So anyways, I'm gonna like probably display this with the other ones, but just for the sake of this video, I just needed somewhere for these to go. So they just like sat here for the moment. Also just ignore this over here. This is all stuff that I need to hang up. Like I said, I think I've only been in my apartment for like two weeks, but I was gone for like a week of that on vacation. So I haven't hung a lot of stuff up yet. Then I have my Anna Huang shelf. I, Miss Anna, I love you. I love you. I love your books. And I have, so the Twisted series and the original men covers. 
I love the men covers, okay? Listen, these men covers are great and you can argue with a wall. I think they're amazing. So these are the indie men covers and I also have the indie versions of the like discrete covers that are not traditionally published. And then I have the first three books in the Kings of Sin series. Again, I have the first two that were traditionally published. And then with King Agreed, they no longer were doing like the tradition or the indie publishing. They were just like the regular ones. So I actually finally just got caught up on this series. I'm going to talk about it in my wrap up. King of Pride, anyone who sh has shit on this book, you need to talk. This was fantastic. I loved this book. Might be a favorite of the year. Then I have my Harley LaRue shelf. Again, Harley, I love you. We both edit with C and every single time I share one of your books, Z always comments on it and I want to be like Z, introduce us, but I won't because that would be weird of your books. So I have the Losers duet. I'm really sad I don't have the original Dare cover. I mean, I like this one. I just love the original Dare cover. So I'm kind of on the hunt for that one still, but I have the Losers duet and the like regular covers. And then I have the Souls trilogy. Her Soul to Take was one of my favorite books of 2021. That was on my top 10. Red Soul for Revenge last year. Loved it. Soul of a Witch I still haven't read yet. I think I'm just putting it off because I don't want to be caught up on Harley LaRue's books because I've read everything else that they've ever written. Uh, and then I have the Dark and Disturbed special editions of these. So I didn't buy these originally because once again, I was trying to be good about buying special editions and I had only read part one. And listen, I really liked part one. But I was like, I don't think I need to buy special editions because, again, I was trying to be frugal. Listen, then I read part two, Losers Part Two, and that has become one of my all-time favorite books. I love those five characters with my entire heart and soul, and I would do anything to protect them. And then I was like, I need these. So when these came out, when they got shipped out, I posted on my Instagram story, and luckily someone sold me theirs. So I have these ones, and these were also designed by the same cover designer that I used for Take You Down and Take My Hand. So I just love these. I think they're so pretty and I love to have them. Now here's my shelf. These are my books with my candle that my friend Claudia got me. It has Take You Down. Oh my God, this is Take You Down. This is my first baby that I ever published. It's a grumpy sunshine, but she's the grump. He's the sunshine, rock star, singer, forced proximity, romance. He's the drummer in a famous band and she's their tour's opening act and I love them with my entire heart and soul. They're my first babies, so they go there. And then Take My Hand, which actually I finally got, hold on, I finally got my non for resale version, so I can put that one to the side and then put that one out there. Oh my God, look at how good they look side by side. This is my most recent release. This one just came out in March. This is book two, but it's an interconnected standalone, so you don't have to read book one in order to read book two, but this one is a friends to lovers, mutual healing, rock star, and tour photographer romance. You do see glimpses of them in book one, but otherwise, like I said, you can just pick up book two. <sighs> I love them. I love my covers. And yeah, that's my shelf. Soon, hopefully to be adding starting line if I can get that shit done. Then up here, I have the Dark and Quirky book two box. Okay, let me try to crane this up as much as I can. Uh, so this, like I was talking about earlier with the Devil in Dublin, so this one is the cover then that has like the white font on it. Uh, but yeah, so I got to be a part of this with four other booktubers and Always Been You was my contribution to the box. I was so excited that QB Tyler said yes to working with me in Dark and Quirky on the special edition. I love it. Y'all know I love a sexy cover. Y'all know I love a person cover and I also love women on covers. So we have Gabrielle front and center on this and then we have James on the back looking so hot in his apartment with the clothes laid out on the floor because you know, uh, I absolutely love this book. I got to help on all of the elements of this with like the formatting design and stuff and it's just so pretty i absolutely love it and so once again thank you to dark and quirky and qb for that those are my shelves in here now let's move out to my living room where i have my other two bookcases but only one of them has books on it so we're almost done you know why don't i oh why don't i just keep this rolling wow we move out here so this one might be harder to see because the lighting is not as good out here but these are my two so you can see I have this bookcase and this bookcase but this one is the only one that has books on it so we'll just talk about this one but I built these I built these with my own two hands and the help of my father so I have my Sarah J Moss shrine out here I have my throne of glass special edition this one is like I think still available and stuff and then I have my original throne of glass series covers in these covers they don't have these anymore i still love these 
I prefer these over the new ones. Um, I'm still undecided about the Fairy Loot ones. So I think they just announced actually that they're pushing back the release of them because people weren't very happy. Listen, Throne of Glass is my favorite fantasy series of all time. So if there's a special edition of them, I want them. But also I was not very impressed in the Fairy Loot editions. And also I'm not a subscriber. So I don't even know if like I would get them if they made them to the sale. So anyways, I have those. And then I have my Crescent City books over here. And then I have the Akatar hardcovers with these pretty special edition dust jackets. I honestly don't know what shop this is from. So Sam from Sam Reads a Little sent me these because she originally bought these, but then her copy that she had bought, like she thought got lost in the mail. They didn't show up after months. So then she contacted the shop, let them know. They sent her a new set. And then of course the like old set arrived and then when she like contacted them, they were like, just keep them. So she sent them to me. So I have these now. Once again, Sam, thank you because these are stunning. Let me move you in a little bit closer. And then down here, I have my original Akatar series in the paperback these covers. I love these covers. Again, prized possession to have. Then I have my special edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses. Love that. And then I have the Illumicrate Bridgerton editions. Will I ever read Bridgerton? No, but I love the show. Listen, season two. Yeah, Aria, it did things, didn't it? It did things. I loved season, well, I love both the seasons. I can't wait for season three, but I had to have them because they're just so pretty. So once again, this was in the height of my special edition buying problem and the reason why I'm strict with myself now. Because did I need these? No, but I love them. And I should have prefaced, I guess, that this is basically like my fantasy books out here. I wanted to try to keep all of my romances in my office. So most of the books out here are like my fantasies or like miscellaneous books. Uh, Fourth Wing and Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. I still haven't read Iron Flame. I really enjoyed Fourth Wing, but I've heard such mixed things about Iron Flame that I'm honestly really nervous to read it. Then I have my, oh, I just realized these are in the wrong order. Um, the Carve the Mark duet by Veronica Roth. I love this duet so much. It's a YA fantasy duet. Literally read it if you love YA fantasy. It's so good. I love it so much. And then I also have The Chosen Ones. I haven't read this from her yet. Then I have the Hunger Games series. Y'all know, it's just, it's the best. Uh, the Divergent series, I will stand by that I love the Divergent books and I actually love how Allegiant ends. And then I have the Ark of the Scythe trilogy and then like Gleanings, which is the short story. I love these. Once again, they're YA dystopian where like no one dies and people then are like made to be sides where they get to glean people. It's so good. And once again, if you like YA, trust me, you have to give it a go. I just love it. Literally like my favorite, besides Hunger Games, my favorite dystopian YA series ever. Okay, now we go even lower. I have my Red Queen series by... Uh, what Victoria Aveyard this these are out of order because I have the paperback of Glass Sword and I like the look of the hardcovers in order so even though Glass Sword is book two it's over here I love that series then Realm Breaker I honestly haven't re read Realm Breaker yet I know that series is actually finished now I honestly don't know if I will read it to be honest I don't know I bought it shortly after I had finished like Red Queen but now I just don't really know if I have an interest in it so I don't know that one might get unhauled at some point uh, but I really loved the Red Queen series. I have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, loved that. Uh, Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy, I've only read book one. I really liked it, but again, I don't know if I'm gonna finish the series at this point. So honestly, I don't know. These again might end up getting unhauled at some point. Then I have my Grishaverse. So I have the Shadow and Bone trilogy, Six of Crows duology, and then I have King of Scars. So I haven't read King of Scars yet. Six of Crows is like my favorite duology out of them all but I do really love Shadow and Bone. I'm still so sad the Netflix show got canceled because I love this universe and I was really really looking forward to a Six of Crows spinoff so that makes me really sad. I have the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa. I have not read that yet uh, and then I have this like uh, what was it? It was an anniversary edition of Allegiant so I was not planning on buying these covers when they came out but then I actually found this at a half price books I think for like five bucks and I'm like well for five dollars I'll buy it. And now I'm like, then I can hunt for the other ones. So this is the only one that I have right now. Then down here, we got a hodgepodge of stuff. We got all of my miscellaneous books. So I have Avicii's biography. I, oh, Avicii is like one of those celebrity deaths that I think will like forever be the one that like hit me the hardest. I loved Avicii and this book was incredible. If you listen to any of his music or if you were ever a fan of him, I highly, highly recommend it. Just a really great insight into 
how much he struggled and it was just amazing stolen life by jc dugard know my name by chanel miller everyone should read this book every single person should read this book if there is one book that i think everyone should read it would be that one uh unbroken by laura hildebrand the spectacular now by tim tharp one of my favorite books ever and one of my favorite movies i'm forever looking for the original cover of that one final girls by riley sager some of these were like book club books so that was a book club one same with never lie by frieda mcfadden big little lies by liam moriarty i read this right before the show came out because the second that shailene woodley was announced in it i was like i'm gonna watch it and i love that series and really like that book then i have my favorite drink and read books uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Carrie Soto's Back. I absolutely love all three of these books. All three of these books were five stars for me. Uh, some of my favorites that I read each year that I read them, and I can't recommend them enough. And then I have these two series that Dark and Quirky had sent me. Someone tell me about these. I genuinely don't know. They're very pretty editions, but I know nothing about them. I know this one is by Caroline Peckman and susan valenti and i know that they do um zodiac academy but i can't commit to zodiac academy but someone let me know if i really need to read this series oh and then i forgot that i have these ones over here so i have manacled by senlin Yu. this now got to me published this germani fan fiction this is truly a most prized possession of mine that's why it has to be displayed out here like i love that We'll never get over that. I want to learn how to bind books, but I don't need another hobby right now. <laughs> and then I just have some other random books. House of the Dragon book. The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. My mom and I read this when I was a kid and we both got each other this for Christmas one year, like without knowing. And so that's just like a cute little special one. And then this Everybody Loves Raymond, like coffee table book, because that is like my favorite show of all time. So yeah, that is empty currently. Cause like I said, still, I don't know what I'm doing with that shelf. Hi, Dorian. Okay, that is the end of the tour. So anyways, that's it for today's video. So on Friday, if I can get two videos out this week or whatever, the next time I guess that I do a video, I'm going to be doing um, 15 books that define my taste, but I really wanted to get a library tour up for you guys just because I had talked about that after my book haul. So anyways, that is that. That is it for today's video and I will see you when I see ya.